Here we go. We've got a lot to cover here today. We've got Bitcoin daily review. We got MasterCard and Bitcoin announcement. We got FTX just did something big. Inflation debates heating up in Twitter and everywhere. I've got a Solana technical review where I'm going to go over the charts and see where we're going to go from here. And then we're going to go over new projects that I just invested in, Cadena and Phantom. So stick around. We're going to get to everything and everything. Before we get to all that, though, if you're new to the channel, the goal here is financial freedom earlier in life, where I go over everything and anything to get us there earlier in life. So make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below while you're down there. Hit that like button too. It really helps and supports the channel. I really appreciate it. Now let's roll. As always, this video is not investment advice. It is not financial advice. It is strictly educational entertainment. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes here today with first up the Bitcoin daily review. Let me pop it on the screen and we're going to go through it right here, right now. So first up, we've got the balance on exchanges. This tells you if institutionals, usually they have to put money, uh, Bitcoins back on exchanges to be able to sell them. So as you start to see, like right here, we did back in May of 2021, a lot of Bitcoins, about 50,000 came back to exchanges. And right around that time when we started to kick up, we had a big sell off. This is usually what happens because institutions need to sell through exchanges and they can't go through a DEX or other things like that. So what we really need to watch is if this starts to tick back up. So every day I check this and every day I'm going to share it with you. So right now it's still low. We're still looking good. We're still looking bullish. Next chart we kind of look for at Bitcoin is the hash rate. You can see right here that we had a recent really big tick up in hash power. So it means that miners are still very bullish. You can see that when miners are still, when they get kind of bearish and you see that they start to take a lot of hash power offline and it's not just China flood like we saw right here. Usually they take uh, mining power offline because it's not as lucrative to mine with older miners. So lots of hash power comes off and it drops and so it, it's kind of a correlation you see between hash power and price action for bitcoin but the fact that we're still pumping up higher means miners are bullish means i'm still bullish too finally we've got the net realized profit and loss with a seven day moving exponential average is that it's high and it is above net neutral which is the zero dollar mark so it's the net realized of profit versus loss so how many people are selling in profit how many people are selling in a loss and it kind of graphs that out but what you need to see here is that usually when we have a large sell-off we start to drop back and return to neutral and then we usually go negative and then when we're sitting around neutral for the net realized profit and loss it's usually a sideways action right now that we're spiked up high it's good news it's bullish news and once we start to return back to neutral for this metric it usually means we we've probably already started to sell off or we're selling off right now as you can see right here we came up high we had a very bullish time we are very net positive a lot of people were taking profits a lot of people were happy in the green and once we've started to have this big sell-off back in may time frame of 2021 we had a big retracement back to neutral and then we had a lot of sideways action a lot of negative bearish sentiment coming down so we had a lot of negative time in our net realized profit and loss so this is a good metric to watch too as soon as this really starts to kind of return to neutral we can expect a sort of retracement or a bearish signal but the fact that we're still up above we're still pretty high a lot of people are in the profit and taking profits or are doing very well in bitcoin right now it's very bu very bullish sentiment so a okay to me also kind of a bullish sentiment and a lot of people like to uh, watch and quote him is plan b he also just released a tweet today that's saying he is still bitcoin bull market with a second leg has just started so this is his models where he's looking at both s2f and s2fx targets and looks like we're kicking back up his model he thinks that we still got a good way to run for this market here today for bitcoin and crypto in general so bullish and kind of more bullish news that we're going to talk about next is that mastercard just came out and announced that they plan to allow merchants to accept the bitcoin payments and this is kind of related to uh says right here that the crypto wallet provider backs which will offer bitcoin custodial services to merchants that sign up executives at mastercard and back says so really this is coming down to it's not that big of a deal because it still relies on merchants to sign up and whether they sign up or not is kind of up in the air and up to the merchants themselves but the fact that they get the ability now if they're in the mastercard network to be able to accept and send payments with bitcoin and other cryptos probably because it's opening up the door to allow more money to be exchanged on bitcoin it's allowing more people to be able to use bitcoin and it is making the overall bitcoin and crypto narrative 
in your face and is getting more people onboarded every single day. So the more positive news, the more institutions, the more money that comes to Bitcoin and is using Bitcoin on a day-to-day -day basis is extremely, extremely good. And then some other big news and what I really love to see is that FTX, my favorite platform, I don't use it, but I wish I could because I live in New York, so I can't use FTX, but they are honestly the best platform there. You got Sam Bakeman free behind him and anything he's behind is phenomenal phenomenal work in the crypto space if there's someone to bet on it's sam bankman free if he's buying it you should probably be buying it too which is why i bought solana so ftx crypto exchange finalizes ledger x acquisition so this deal gives ftx us a slew of licenses granted to ledger x by the us commodity futures trading commission it lets uh ftx now do crypto futures swaps options and allows all the UTL, uh, US retail traders to be able to do all those things. So it's opening the door to more revenue for FTX and it's also allowing FTX to really broaden their scope of what they do, what they offer. So they're in NF NFTs, they're in regular crypto trading, now they're in crypto futures, swaps, options. They are just taking over the entire space. So if there's a horse to bet on, it's FTX. Next up, what I really want to touch on really quick is the inflation debate that Jack Dorsey just kind of launched in Twitter. He's a very big name. He's got a lot of people following him. And a lot of people saw this, that hyperinflation is going to change everything. And it's happening right now. And this had a lot of big name people come in and give their own thoughts and opinion on whether we're in an inflationary environment or a deflationary environment. So we had Kathy Wood over at ARK Invest in 2008 to 2009 when the Fed started quantitative easing. I thought that inflation would take off. I was wrong. Instead, velocity, the rate at which money turns over per year, declined, taking away inflationary sting. Velocity is still falling. In her entire Twitter thread, she explains it out, but she believes that we are not going into an inflationary environment like a lot of people think. So we might be going into a slight inflation environment, but she also, also believes we're going into more of a deflation environment all, it's what she's kind of thinking and another famous person that is very macro minded very similar to kathy is Raoul paul and i respect him a lot he is very smart in the macro space and to my mind monetary condition are tightening tightening to as the dollar slowly rises so 2022 is going to be a very different year and my bet is more qe and fiscal into the economic slowdown but shout inflation all you want but the demand side too it ain't pretty so he doesn't, he's not an inflationist. He believes that we're actually going into a deflationary period where we have a lot more tightening from the Fed. We have a lot. And you also see that we had Michael Saylor down here. Inflation is the problem. Bitcoin is the solution. It's going to be an interesting and wild ride as to whether we have a very a inflationary environment. Because right now we have an inflationary environment. We know we can see that all, all over the place. And it's very much driven by systemic issues with our supply chain and not being able to get things where they need to right now in a very efficient manner. And a lot of places are feeling this struggle and prices are going up in cause to this but as we work through the supply chain issues and things become more lean and fast and quick technology kind of in innovates and removes the supply chain struggles that we're currently seeing there's going to be a lot of we're not going back to the old way of supply chain we're going to a new way of supply chain management it's much leaner and faster and we don't need as much of the fat anymore and that is kind of what we're seeing and that's kind of what's leading us to a deflation instead of an inflation so inflation currently but with a deflation on the tail end and that is what a lot of macro minds are seeing but a lot of people are just seeing the current inflationary environment that we're in so we're gonna have to watch and see how it goes out but either way crypto is the place to be bitcoin whether it is deflationary or inflationary is the hedge for both sides of that tail end next i want to do a quick technical review of solana so this is a solana chart on the daily and it is looking very good so initially i thought that we had this uh let me draw it out for you we have a triangle pattern that we broke out of very beautifully i called this in my twitter i called this in my previous uh daily update videos I called that we were going to break this sort of symmetrical triangle up to the north side and it was going to be beautiful and that did happen but what we're kind of seeing right now and what I kind of was uh, looking at the technical chart for Solana was we entered this sort of uh, trend pattern bearish uh, bullish flag and it was looking good we initially broke back into it and then we were kind of retesting as to whether we were going to stay above the trend line or retrace back into this sort of this channel right here 
and we actually broke and stayed above it. So we kind of confirmed the breakout and it looks good. But what actually could happen and what I think is probably the most likely case is with Solana, we're actually going to create a new larger trend line if it doesn't have a much of a, a significant pop. I think we're going to, let me draw it out for you. I think we're going to trace all the way up to probably hit the trend line right here about 261 and then we're going to slowly retrace back back down to about 205 and maybe break out higher that's what i kind of see if we don't have a very explosive blow off i think about 280 is where we're going to go to and that's my thoughts on solana but i think solana for the entire bull market guess what boys and girls i think we're going to be going all the way up to $800 range maybe a thousand dollar range and i think it's only just beginning solana is the horse you want to bet on and not financial advice not investment advice those are my thoughts on solana but i was talking about solana way back in the beginning of this year when it was like 30 40 bucks and now it's at 208 and it's going to go way 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 higher for this cycle i think but what are my next two thoughts and the next two projects that i just invested a small amount into and i am very interested in right now so first up is cadena cadena is a proof of work multi-chain blockchain where they're building upon the thoughts and ideas of bitcoin and expanding it beyond just expanding a block size like either bitcoin cash is doing or bitcoin sv is doing they are taking and they are using 20 simultaneously mined chains to scale their proof of work network beyond just the block size and from what it is sitting at right now it's about a 1 billion dollar valuation i think it could easily go to a 10 billion dollar valuation in the short term but it could go even further to about a 50 billion dollar valuation so even if it does only go to 10 billion that's a 10x return from here currently where it has where it is right now if it goes to 50 billion that's a 50x return from where it is right now you're not going to get that out of solana anymore you're not going to get that out of a lot of the other top 10 cryptos even though Solana is going to do very, very well, it could do 5x, it could do 4x, could do 3x right now. You're going to need to get into smaller projects if you want a very, very big return that has more risk to it. So me, my thoughts is that Cadena could easily, possibly, possibly, let's just say possibly go 10x from here. And I think it is very interesting project to kind of look into more. And I'm going to doing a uh, probably a longer video on Kadena and more about it in general. But what you need to know is a proof of work network and they intend to stay with proof of work and not go like every other smart contract blockchain is doing right now and going to proof of stake. They're going to stay proof of work and that is what kind of is really differentiating them the most in general for the smart contract blockchain technologies the other project that i'm very interested in is phantom a lot of people have already talked about phantom it's a proof of stake network another high throughput throughput network based on high spec servers just kind of like solana and their technical chart looks very very similar to solana in the early days in early time this year and i think phantom could 5x from where it is today and that is why I put a small position into Phantom that you can kind of see that they do have some, some projects going on on their platform. So it's good news to see that things are kind of being built on the Phantom blockchain. And we're just going to have to see how things go in general for Phantom. But I think Phantom could 5x from where it is right now. So we're going to have to watch and see how it goes. But those are the two projects that I am currently newly invested into, you could say. And my current portfolio weighting for everything is currently 6% Cadena, 6% Phantom, 6% Bitcoin, 50% Bitcoin, not Bitcoin, 50% Solana, and 32% Ethereum. So I have a lot of the layer one blockchains for smart contracts and then Bitcoin itself in general as a kind of just, you gotta have Bitcoin in your portfolio no matter what you do. So guys and gals, that is what I'm currently doing. That's kind of the news of the today and kind of where we're going, I think bullish for bitcoin a lot of good news coming out for cryptos in general and i think it's going to be a continuation of the bull run for a while longer pro probably at least through the end of the year with pullbacks along the way guys and gals i hope you enjoy this content make sure you share make sure you like make sure you subscribe and as always also leave a comment down below i appreciate it let me know what you want to hear about let me know what your thoughts on the on the video itself and guys and gals let's go make some money i'll see you out there